Hey, your viewers and viewers, my name is General Red Stratist, and welcome back to So You're Being Hunted, episode 506. Okay, so me and Phil, for the last couple of episodes, took a momentary diversion um, from what I was actually doing. So we're back with the Chuckle Vision Challenge. So this time we're going to get it started off proper, hopefully. So, um, yeah, I mean, last couple of episodes were good, you know. We, we just kind of felt that... Um, since it was a momentous occasion here in the UK, I, we, we kind of had to sort of talk about it. And we kind of didn't want to be doing that in the middle of a challenge when I might end up having to interrupt the conversation, you know, just because of the challenge rules and all that. So that's why we took a momentary diversion. And then Phil said, oh, I've also got an idea for a little game we could play in Surrey being undid. And I thought, you know what? Fuck it. We'll do an extra diversionary episode as well. So we did. And you know what? That's all the reason we need. Don't need more reason than that, eh? You know, I don't have to justify myself to the likes of you lot. Hmm? Yeah, horrible bunch. I'm sorry, no, I don't mean that at all. I love every single one of you. I love every single one of you as if you were my own children, even though I've never met a single one of you and I have no idea who you are for all I know. You could actually all just be a bunch of overly intelligent penguins in Antarctica watching this on your strange little screens, your icy crystal screens. What's the weather like down there, ladies and gentlemen? You see, I was going to uh, make a joke about how my viewers could in fact all be crazy fucking axe murderers or something for all I know, but then suddenly the polite part of me intervened and said, no, make it make it something adorably humorous, Red. Whoop. Go over there. Let's go and get this final device piece on this island and then we'll uh, head off somewhere else. I haven't got uh, a gun yet, so I can't really do the whole to me to you thing, can I? I just have to try my best. But the squires will be spawning at some point. Can I fucking... There we go. God. I was worried for a second I wasn't going to be able to get that device piece. It was like spawned in the side of a building. What was that about? Alright. Uh, I definitely don't have a gun, do I? No, 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 I don't. That's fine. I've got a bit of ammo for a shotgun, but I haven't got anything else. So I'm just going to defend myself from a weapon from somewhere. And then hope for the best. Right. But since I'm going to record this, ladies and gentlemen, it's late afternoon. Frigging at work has been busy today. Very, very busy, in fact. There's been a lot going on. Basically, I've uh, had an online seminar in the morning, and then for a good portion of the day, I was just on reserve standby, which basically means uh, I have to sit in my office at work in case I'm needed to cover for anyone. Fortunately, I wasn't, and I was able to just do various other work-related tasks in the background, which was fine. I managed to prep for another seminar tomorrow, managed to take a look and a freaking prospective student's personal statement and things like this. Just going through it, you know? That's an interesting topic though, isn't it? Personal statements. I hadn't actually been thinking about that as a topic, but now that I think about it, it's interesting. Potential topic. Because, you know, in the So You've Been Cutted series, I've often talked about my job as an academic before, and things that I, you know, I've learned from it. Pieces of advice that I would give to people. And that, I suppose, is something that uh, I know you're all dying to know. Oh, General Red. Oh, Red. Oh, Red. What's your advice? I'm trying to write a personal statement for my curriculum vitae so that I can get a job at flipping burgers at McDonald's. Well, ladies and gentlemen, don't you worry. You ask me that question, and you shall receive. I shall give thee my advice, bearing in mind that, you know, I'm not exactly a recruitment specialist. But my big advice is you've got to freaking sell yourself. You've got to try and tailor that personal statement to whatever position, course, qualification, or whatever you're applying for, ladies and gentlemen. Make sure you do that. I must say, you know, if there's kind of one thing that I would say about myself in terms of, you know, if you're ever to ask me as a professional, what is probably my one weakness, or biggest weakness, something like that, I would say it's often that I can be a bit too modest. People have said this to me before, I can be a bit too modest and sometimes, you know, when I'm applying for things, I, I sometimes have this tendency to kind of undersell myself a bit. And truth be told, I imagine that's a common thing. I imagine there's a lot of people who do that. I mean, I won't be the first person to have done that and I'm going to be the last. And there are about 10 bajillion other people around the world right now who are currently underselling themselves on their CVs, on their personal statements, on their resumes if you're American and all that. You show me some goods in here. Food, maybe? Mints? Sure, I'll eat. Why not? 
Okay. Still don't hear any squires yet. Which is fortunate, but I'm sure they'll show up at some point. Eat mints and get stuff. Uh, no, nothing that. Okay. Oh, it's an apple. Uh, I'll eat that. There we go. Alright, maybe it is time just to head to another island. Maybe that is what we need to do here. So yes, personal statements, curriculum vitae, resumes, ladies and gentlemen. For all your careers, advice with red. Well, for your careers, advice with red, rather, I should say, always this. Always look at the job or course description and tailor your application materials to suit it. Think about what skills all your life experiences add up to and how they might be relevant to whatever you're applying for and all that. That always helps. All right, uh, I'm just going to jump up here whilst I head to the next island. One second, everybody. Okay, South Island. Here we are. God, it's dark. Let's get that torch on. There we are. All right. So, yes, not really much else I can say other than what I was saying before, ladies and gentlemen. So that's that topic of, of conversation exhausted pretty damn quickly, isn't it? Yes. I always uh, sometimes have a struggle, though, when I am recording videos in an afternoon after I've done work. Because, of course, you know, I've been engaging my brain so much throughout the day, then I get back home. And, of course, I, I just want to switch my brain off so I can just play games and not really have to think. But then, of course, I end up doing podcast-style episodes in Serbian Country where I kind of do have to think because I have to keep a conversation going, and then I end up in this situation where, actually, suddenly, I am having to engage my brain, but my brain is tired after all the engagement throughout the day. And so I'm like, oh, I really can't be fucking bothered. I can't be freaking bothered, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. <laughs> you know, one thing I have been thinking about, though, recently... Sorry. You know, everything I was just saying about, you know, me not being able to kind of keep a topic of conversation going, I'm about to just disprove because I'm about to do so, but what I've been thinking about recently is that I really need to up uh, upload more stuff onto my propagandist channel when I get a chance. Because I uploaded uh, another Girls and Panzer video um, recently, AI-generated imagery. But, you know, I've been wanting to upload more on there. And what I need to do is maybe try and get some more anime reviews on there. I've got a couple more um, animes, actually, that I want to watch. Got them on DVD because they looked interesting. One of them called Jinro, which is a film. Oh, is it Squire Time? I think it's Squire Time. And the other one is the season one of... I think it's... Is it pronounced Golden Kamoi? 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 I have no idea. All right, Squire Boy, it's time to do this. I've got to start messing up the things in the doors here. This is going to be bad. Hey, hey, check this out. I'm moving this around for you. Uh-oh, here he goes. Shit. Hey. Fuck. Does that satisfy the requirements? Phil, you are the person who suggested this challenge. Does that satisfy the requirements for that rule? I'm going to say it does because I'm nearly dead. Yep. Did I or did I not say when I started this challenge that I was not optimistic about how far it would last, how long it would go on for? And that's precisely the reason why. <laughs> that was precisely why I was worried. Then again, that was my own bloody fault. I should have opened one of the doors at the other end of the village, not the one that was like right next to him. It didn't give me barely any time to get away before he triggered. Okay. Well, that's the end of the Truckle Vision Challenge. <laughs> God dang it. Ugh, oh, so bad. Alright, hold on, let me just load in the last save. Yeah, might as well, um... Keep going for another few minutes. Make this more of a podcast episode, then, rather than a challenge video. So, Truckle Vision Challenge pretty much failed <laughs> very quickly. As soon as the Squires come in, it becomes very difficult. So, who knows? I mean, it's always a challenge suggesting that I could try again in the future if ever I feel like it. So, we'll see. We'll see. But yeah, I want to just keep going for a little bit longer because, you know, why the hell not? So yeah, Propaganda's channel, I want to get more and more stuff out on there. And Phil always used to say to me, you know, Red... But that way well, he doesn't call me Red, he calls me Andrew, obviously, but, you know, he always used to say, you don't just have to do anime content on there, you know. You could always just do other stuff as well. And I think to myself, yeah, I could. But let's be honest, it kind of feels like it's become an anime channel, that now that I only upload on occasionally when I get time. So, you, yeah, I, who knows? I know obviously there's lots of like reactor channels out there who react to various things like trailers and stuff like that. 
The only problem with being a reaction channel is you have to kind of pick and choose very carefully what, react, yeah, what you react to. Because a lot of stuff obviously ends up just getting you freaking copyright, content ID'd, and things like that. Hell, if you look at a lot of my um, Girls and Panzer videos over on Propagandist, you'll see they are freaking content ID'd. They are monetized by bloody whatever freaking company has the copyright for the music and whatever else, have you? Which is fucking annoying, but um, what can you do, eh? But yeah, I've said this before and I'll say it again. I, I also need to go back to watching Ruby. I'm very behind on Ruby as well. Because I used to do um, the Let's Watch of Volume 5 of that. And then after Volume 5, I was going to do Volume 6, but then never actually did. Of course, now, that Let's Watch Ruby series of mine over on Propaganda is about three years old now. Because the last video was uploaded sometime in 2019. And since then, I'm very behind on Ruby. Because I think they're coming up to Volume 9 now. I'm really fucking behind, and I know that the later volumes of Ruby, like 6 onwards particularly, have kind of got very polarised opinions. Some people, well, Jesus, God, fucking, did, did I just do a fucking 360 with my camera when I knocked my mouse down? I don't even know. Good lord. Um, what was I saying? I know that uh, volume 6 onward of Ruby tends to be a bit polarising. Some people really like them, some people really hate them. But I'm, you know, I think it's worth giving them a shot. Because I do like the characters in those uh, in that show. Yes, yes, indeed. But yes, um, Golden Kamoy, or however, however it's pronounced, season one, which I've now got on DVD. I haven't watched it yet, but it looks very interesting. Um, it's basically, by the looks of it, a historical anime. It's set, I think, early 20th century, roundabout or just after the Russo-Japanese War. But yeah, I'll probably actually do a podcast-style episode talking about it when... Um, well, once I've actually watched it. And then, um... The aim is probably to do a review video on it over on Propagandist. Something like that. But yes. You see, that's uh, my plans for the some point in the future. Okay, I've just been running around. I haven't actually been picking up any device pieces or paying any attention to where there's any around. But that's obviously because I kind of have failed the challenge already, so there's no real point in me doing so. Okie doke. Um... Oh, yeah, it's just basically become a podcast episode at this point, hasn't it? H hasn't it just, ladies and ge ladies and gentlemen? You know, actually, one thing that did happen early this morning when I was going to work... Sorry, uh, uh, we're, this is whiplash, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to a completely different topic at the drop of a coin. Um, what did happen when I went to work this morning is that the traffic was bloody horrendous for no apparent reason. So, down the main road where I normally drive in order to get to work. There have been a few roadworks existing because they've been putting in a roundabout. And so naturally there's been sort of temporary lights put up and that causes a bit of traffic backup. So that was normal. But usually if I see a tra traffic backup ahead and if I see it in plenty of time, I have like an alternate route that I can take in order to get to my workplace that just goes through like a little quick little co uh, bleh, bleh, couple of country roads, West Virginia and all that. Yeah, <laughs> reference, Fallout 76. Um, but, you know, it, it sort of goes down a couple of country roads through a village and then up and cuts through to where I work. But the um, problem is I was driving up this morning and I decided to go that way because I could see further up the main road that the traffic was really backing up. And I thought, oh shit, I better take the alternate route otherwise I'm going to be sat in traffic for ages. Turns out, didn't really help, because I ended up sat in traffic for ages anyway, because for some fucking reason, don't know why, traffic was backing up through this village, this alternate route, for no apparent reason. It's like, you know, have a, one of those kind of traffic jams where you join the back of a really long queue, and you're trying to like look ahead, but you can't really see what's causing the holdup, you just see a long line of traffic. But it is slowly, painstakingly moving forward. And... You just sort of sit there and you think, okay, at least it's moving. I will eventually get to where I need to be, and I will get there in time at this rate. And so I was sat there just slowly, slowly creeping along in my car with this long line of traffic. And then we got into the village, the main village itself, and suddenly, after, you know, about 10 minutes in the traffic jam, everyone just started moving. And it was like, oh, well, what the fuck was that all about? Why was there just a big traffic jam then? It's just one of those things where it's like, people, I don't know, there's a jam for no apparent reason. It's weird. You guys have probably had that run, yeah, right? When you're out driving, those of you who can drive anyway, at least. 
Oh, who am I kidding? <laughs> oh, my RV was a two-wheel drive. <laughs> no, they're not actually. Not according to Google Analytics. Anyway, last time I checked, pretty sure the biggest demographics on my channel are the sort of 17 to 24s who will include, you know, which will include a fair number of people who can drive and 25 to 30 some things who are very likely to be able to drive, I would say. So actually, probably a good number of my viewers probably can drive, so, you know, ignore my silly joke. Me joking about the fact that you're actually all a bunch of kids who can't drive. What's going on with me today? For some reason this episode so far, this is the second time now that I've been abusing my audience. But again, that's not new, is it? I like to sometimes abuse my audience. Because <laughs> why not? You know? Why not? Besides, it's not even that harsh an abuse, to be honest. It's probably some, you know, pretty tame compared to some of the things that some YouTubers out there probably say. Good lord. Alright, well, you know what? I think we're, we're done with this episode. <laughs> I'm just stretching it out at this point, padding it out so it's at least more than ten minutes long. So we failed the Chuckle Vision Challenge, ladies and gentlemen. That's officially over. I had a feeling it was going to end that way, to be honest, so can't say I'm particularly disappointed or surprised by that. But hey, you know, I gave it my shot. I gave it a best shot, and maybe I'll give it another try again at some point in the future. I say that, I have no idea if, if and when I'll do it. So yeah, Facebook, do the links down below, along with a link to my propagandist channel for anyone who just didn't enjoyed. I'd like to always appreciate all that jazz. Uh, but than that, this is General Red signing off. Goodbye, everybody. Oh, what the? What? This, this feels... Like we're actually being put into the game. What, are we having a chase scene? Right off the bat? Josie, over here. That's what he's going to call. <laughs> That's going to be, uh... Oh, what the? Ooh. Uh, okay. I, I don't know if we want to be near that. Are we just going downstairs? Oh, hello. I mean, it's an interesting form of chase sequence, but, uh... Okay. Oh, well, there's another one right there. I guess I'm going this way, am I? Jesus. Oh! Well, that's another one. Oh, well, you're over there now. Don't go that way, Josie. Over here. That's Shuichi's pet name for Kai Day now. <laughs> oh! Well, yeah, that one's on route. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I can sprint, can't I?